Hello everyone, this is Yoan and welcome to a new tutorial. Today I would love to share the Misty Patchwork Bag Project. This is an adorable crossbody bag combining patchwork and four letter. The measurements of this bag are approximately 10 inches at the widest point by 10 inches by 3 inches deep. It comes with a front zipper pocket, a zipper closure, two slip pockets, and a zipper pocket in the interior as well. The pattern or the cutting instructions of this project can be downloaded at yuansewingstudio.com. I will have the link in the description box down below as well. In the pattern, I also included the measurements for solid panels in case you don't want to do the patchwork. Before we get started, let's thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is such an amazing platform for creatives just like you and me with thousands of inspiring classes featuring various topics such as arts, crafts, photography, music, film, entrepreneurship, and much more. One of the classes that I took recently and enjoy very much is the Creative Transformation, Nine Exercises to Draw, Write, and Discover Your Future with Marie Andrew. In this class, Mari guides you to explore key areas of your life and make actionable plans for your future through reflective yet fun drawing and writing exercises. This class has helped me a lot to refocus because I've been quite drifted lately and feeling a little lost. After doing the exercises from this class, I was able to recenter again and figuring out what I really wanted to do and what are the actions and adjustments that I have to make for the rest of the years and for the years to come both in my personal life and also in my career life. So if you are interested in joining the Skillshare community and just dive into so many exciting classes and just get lost in your creativity, right now the first 1,000 people who use the link in the description box will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So join now and enjoy your learning experience with Skillshare. All right, thank you so much for listening to the sponsorship. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and without further ado, let's get started. Let's start by working on a half square triangle patchwork. You will need two five inch squares and then you wanna lay them right sides together just like that. Now take your ruler and draw a diagonal line just like so and then sew quarter of an inch away from the diagonal line on both sides. Now let's pop a couple of pins to secure them in place. I'm sewing with quarter of an inch foot, simply aligning the edges of the presser foot with the diagonal line. If you don't have quarter of an inch foot, you may draw the seam line beforehand and then use regular presser foot. Once you've done that, you want to cut right on that diagonal line. You may use scissors or rotary cutter, it doesn't really matter. And there you go. You should end up with two half square triangles. Now you can press the seams open. Now we're going to square this up so that it will measure 4 inch square. So I'm going to take my square ruler and then I'm going to align the diagonal line of the fabric with the diagonal line of the ruler. So first we're going to trim off just a little bit to straighten up the edges about a quarter of an inch. Now I'm going to flip this to the opposite side. And then this time I'm going to align the edges at exactly 4 inch point and then trim. Now I have a 4 inch square half square triangle. So you want to repeat this and make in total of 12 half square triangles. Now we're going to work on the front exterior. Lay out 3 half square triangles next to each other in the same direction, just like so. So you want to go by the direction of the diagonal seams, make sure they are the same, and then sew with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Once you've done that, you want to press the seams open, and there you go. So this is going to be panel 1 or the upper panel of the front exterior. Let's apply some interfacing to the wrong side of your panel. First, we're going to apply a little bit of fusible woven interfacing along the long edges. And once you've done that, you want to apply heavier interfacing or stabilizer. Something that is firm yet still pliable, such as Decoville Light. This is the one that I'm using. Or you may use Decorbone or Craft Fuse as well. 
and you want to apply that right on the center according to the manufacturer's instructions. So you're going to work the same interfacing method for all the patchwork panels. Make another panel exactly the same way and this will be for panel 2 or the lower panel. For the panel 2, you will also need to cut a rectangle from the full leather fabric or the vinyl fabric. So the patchwork panel with the full leather panel. So you want to lay them right sides together and then stitch with half an inch of seam allowance. Finger press the seams towards the patchwork fabric and then top stitch. Now let's work on the zipper pocket. So you will need a 9 inch long zipper, which means the length of the zipper teeth is 9 inches long. I'm using a metal zipper 1 inch wide. You may also use an all-purpose nylon coil zipper. Now take the zipper tab and then fold that in half, wrong sides together of course. Position that on the zipper extension tape right by the zipper stop. Secure that in place with a couple of clips and then sew along the folded edges with about an eighth of an inch of seam allowance. Repeat the same to the opposite end. Now trim off the excess fabric so that the zipper tab will have the same width as the zipper tape. Next you want to mark the center point of the zipper. So I'm just going to fold my zipper in half, matching the start and the stop of the zipper teeth, these ones here. And then with my fabric marker, I'm just going to mark the center point on both sides. Lay panel 2 right side up. I'm going to use basting tape to do the zipper sandwich. So let's apply the basting tape along the top edges of panel 2. Now peel the top layer off and then take the zipper and lay that right side down, matching the center point of the zipper with the center point of the fabric. Now press with your finger so that the zipper tape will be sticking to your fabric. Now we're going to apply another basting tape on the edges of the zipper tape. Peel the top layer off. Take panel 3 or the inner pocket panel and lay that right side down. Once everything is secured, you want to sew with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Now you want to turn this to the right side. And then press the seams, both the exterior and the interior as well. Now go ahead and top stitch. Alright, so you should end up with something like this. Next, we're gonna sew panel 1 to the upper edges of the zipper. So let's flip this upside down. So the bottom edges will be facing up at this point, since we're gonna sew the bottom. Now again, I'm gonna apply the basting tape along the edges. Lay the zipper panel right side down, matching the center point of course and aligning the side edges. Apply some basting tape along the edges of the zipper tape. Fold the pocket panel, you want to bring the bottom edge to the top edge. And of course you want to finger press to make sure that the fabric is sticking to the basting tape. And once everything is secured, go ahead and sew with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Once you've done that, press the seams and top stitch. And there you go, our pocket panel is done. Now trim off the excess zipper tabs. Stitch along the sides with quarter of an inch of seam allowance where the inner pocket is sitting to hold it in place. And that's it, the front exterior panel is done. Now we're going to work on the back exterior. So we're going to use the remaining half square triangles. Sew three of them together, just like when we did the front exterior. And then we're going to sew them together with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Once you've done that, just like before, we're going to apply a little bit of fusible woven interfacing or lightweight interfacing along the edges to stabilize the edges without being too bulky. And then apply the heavier interfacing right on the center. So the upper panel or panel 4 is done. Now let's prepare panel 5, which is the full letter panel. And we're going to sew them together with half an inch of seam allowance. Once you've done that, you want to press the seams and top stitch. Next, you want to cut one and a half inch square notches on both bottom corners of your exterior pieces. And of course, later we're going to do the same for the interior pieces as well. Now that we've got both the front and back exterior ready to go, let's go ahead and assemble them. Lay the front and back exterior right sides together. 
clip them in place and then sew the sides and the bottom with half an inch of seam allowance now we're gonna box to the corner so let's open this up and match the seams secure them in place and then sew with half an inch of seam allowance now let's turn this inside out poke the corners and voila our exterior shell is done now we're gonna work on the zipper closure panel one will be the ones that will sit on the right side of the zipper tape and you want to apply a little bit of fusible woven interfacing on the wrong side of course and these are panel two and they will be sitting on the wrong side of the zipper tape fold the short sides of all the panels towards the wrong side about half an inch now let's prepare our zipper so i'm gonna use the same zipper as the front exterior so it's a nine inch long metal zipper one inch wide first we're gonna hide this extension zipper from both ends i've already done this side so it's very simple all you need to do is just fold the extension zipper towards the wrong side just like that and then stitch right along the edges with about an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch of seam allowance so you should end up with something like this all the zipper tape extensions should be tucked underneath and also you want to mark the center point of the zipper lay one of the panel one right side up and then apply basting tape on one of the long edges now you want to take the zipper and lay that right side down again we're going to apply basting tape along the edges of the zipper tape now grab panel 2 and then lay that right side down of course you want to align the center and the side edges as well and then stitch with quarter of an inch of seam allowance now let's turn this to the right side finger press the seams and then top stitch and then stitch along the edges with one eighth of an inch of seam allowance now you want to repeat the same to the opposite side and you should end up with something like this so our zipper closure panel is done and ready to go now let's work on the back interior these are the upper panel of the interior which i call panel 6 and you want to apply fusible woven interfacing to the wrong side of these pieces and these are the lower panels or panel 7 let's work on the slip pocket so you want to lay the pocket pieces right sides together and then sew the long sides with quarter of an inch of seam allowance once you've done that you want to press the seams open and then turn the pocket piece inside out and then you want to press this again make it nice and crisp and top stitch along the top edges lay the pocket panel on the right side of one of the panel 7 about 3 inches down from the top Pop a couple of pins to secure them in place and then sew along the center to divide the pocket into two and the sides and the bottom of the pocket as well. Now let's work on the zipper pocket. Apply a little bit of interfacing on the wrong side just where we're gonna draw the zipper template. Draw a 7 by 3 8 of an inch rectangle for the template. And of course you want to draw the line on the center and the little corner triangles now let's prepare panel 7 and i also like to apply a little bit of fusible woven interfacing just around where the zipper is going to be installed now let's flip this to the right side and then take the pocket panel and lay that right side down about one inch down from the top edges now let's pin this in place and then sew along the outline of the zipper template and you may continue and install the zipper pocket just like the usual i'm pretty sure a lot of you already know how to do this by heart by now if you need a tutorial on how to do this i will refer you to a different video so you may check that somewhere on the description box down below all right so both of our pockets are done and now you may cut the one and a half inch square notches on the bottom corners just like when we did the exterior pieces now let's assemble the back interior so this panel with the zipper pocket will be the back side of the interior and the one with the slip pockets will be the front side of the interior now take the zipper panel with the right side facing up and the zipper pull at your left hand side now let's lay this wrong side down matching the center point 
Now take panel 6 or the upper panel and lay that right side down. Now you want to secure this in place with some sewing clips and then sew with half an inch of seam allowance. So you should end up with something like this. Now you may go ahead and press the seams just so everything will lay nice and flat. Just be mindful with the zippers. Now we're going to repeat the same for the front panel. So lay panel 7 right side up and then lay the zipper wrong side down, matching the center point of course. Take panel 6 and lay that right side down, clip them in place and then sew with half an inch of seam allowance. And this is how the zipper closure should look like. Now we're going to assemble the interior pretty much the same way as we did the exterior. Here I've already clipped the sides and the bottom. And so let's go ahead and sew this with half an inch of seam allowance and then box the corners afterwards. And voila, the back interior is done and ready to go. Fold the top edges of the back interior about half an inch towards the wrong side and then press so that the fold will stay in place. We're going to do the same for the back exterior, so fold the top edges towards the wrong side about half an inch and then I'm just going to use some clips to hold the fold in place and there you go. Let's set this aside for now. Now we're going to work on the D-ring tabs. Cut up two rectangles from the four letter fabric. Now you want to position the rectangle lengthwise just like this and then draw a line right on the center. So simply measure one inch from the edge. Now fold the edges towards the center, just like that, and then clip to hold this in place. Obviously you don't want to use pins when working with fold later. Now stitch this in place with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. My walking foot works very well in handling this uh, particular fold later fabric. You may also use Teflon foot, so feel free to experiment and see which one works best with the particular fabric that you use and also it depends on your machine as well. Now let's repeat the same to the opposite side and you should end up with something like this and this is how it looks on the wrong side. Attach the D-ring to the tab just like that. Position the D-ring tab on the wrong side of the back interior right on the side seams about half an inch down just like shown here. Clip this in place and then stitch to hold this in place with about quarter of an inch of seam allowance. And once you've done that, you want to repeat the same to the opposite side. Now we're going to work on the adjustable strap. So from the four letter fabric, you will need to cut a 55 inch long strip. If you can cut a continuous strip, that's fantastic. If you don't have sufficient length, you may need to join two strips together. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So let's cross the strips right sides together just like so. Leave about half an inch of tail on both ends. Now I'm going to place a couple of clips just to hold this for now. Draw a diagonal line from this upper corner. And then sew right on that line. Once you've done that, you want to trim off the excess fabric about quarter of an inch away from the seam line. Open the seams just like that and then stitch along the edges with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance. I'm stitching with the right side facing up about an eighth of an inch from the seam line. And you should end up with something like this. Now let's trim off this excess little fabric sticking out. Alright, now you want to draw the center line on the wrong side of the fabric. The same way we did with the D-ring tabs. Fold the edges towards the center line and then clip. And then we're gonna stitch this in place. This time we're gonna use 3 8 of an inch of seam allowance. When I sew with four letter, I usually increase the stitch length. So right now I'm sewing with 3 millimeter stitch length. Now we're gonna repeat the same to the opposite side. So fold the edges towards the center. And then stitch with 3 8 of an inch of seam allowance. So this is how the strap should look like for now. Now let's prepare the inner strap. So cut a strip of fabric about 1 and 3 quarter of an inch wide. So it's a slight smaller than the four letter fabric. Fold and press the edges towards the center fold. And you want to also fold the short sides towards the wrong side. About half an inch to hide the raw edges. Now lay the four letter strap wrong side up. 
and then you want to lay the inner strap wrong side down so you want to position that a slide towards the inside since the inner strap is a bit shorter you may apply a little bit of fabric basting glue to hold this temporarily a little goes along the way though place some clips along the edges and then stitch this in place with quarter of an inch of seam allowance and when you're done with this, of course, you want to repeat the same to the opposite side. And this is how your strap should look like now. Now we're going to add one more stitching along the edges. So let's go ahead and sew one eighth of an inch from the edges on both sides. All right, so the strap should look just like this. And this is how it looks on the wrong side. Now when you work with fold later, you may not want to backstitch um, when you sew, especially when the seams are going to be exposed. So instead, you want to knot each thread with regular hand sewing needle and then bury the thread in between the layer of the fabric. Now let's install the hardwares. So here I've got my rivets. To install the rivets, you will need this hole puncher and also a hammer. You will also need two swivel hooks and the adjuster slider. Now you want to hold the adjuster slider right side up and then feed one of the end of the strap from the wrong side towards the right side and then back to the wrong side just like that leave about one and a half inch of clearance measure half an inch from the edges of the strap and then put a little mark there now let's make a hole on that half an inch mark make sure to select the same size puncher as the start of your rivet because you don't want to punch too big of a hole now insert the start of the rivet to the wrong side and then place the cap on the right side now you want to take the base setter position that at the bottom now let's take the anvil tool and position that right on top of the cap and then strike with a hammer until the rivet is set in place now take one of the swivel hook insert that through the other end of the strap and you want to make sure that the head of the swivel hook is facing towards the outside now let's insert this end of the strap through the slider from the wrong side towards the right side and then back to the wrong side pull the strap through make sure that there is no twist now grab the other swivel hook and feed that to the end of the strap leave about a couple of inches of clearance and then you want to install two set of rivets in place so you want to install the rivets about half an inch apart just like so and there you go the adjustable strap is done all right now it's time to assemble our bag so we're gonna do the drop in method so your bag exterior should be right side out and your bag interior should be wrong side out now let's insert the bag interior into the exterior shell so the wrong sides should be touching each other and be mindful with the front and the back so you want to make sure that the front of the interior which is the one with the slip pockets is facing the front side of the exterior and the back side which is the one with the zipper pocket is facing the back exterior now let's secure this in place with some clips so first we're going to match the side seams and then clip all around so everything will be nice and secure and once you've done that let's stitch this all around you may use one eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch of seam allowance whichever one is more comfortable for you and take your time no need to rush make sure everything is nice and neat and when i got to the deering tab i like to backstitch a little bit just to add extra reinforcement there so our bag is pretty much done at this point now it's time to attach the strap and voila enjoy your new bag that's about it for today guys thank you so much for watching and i shall see you next time goodbye